Hello play readers, viewers, uh, DVD watchers. We've got ourselves a, uh, a PlayStation Vita here and we decided to do a few little videos just showing you a few features of it, a few of the games, that kind of thing. How it turns itself off if you don't touch it for a few seconds. Just uh, pop that back on. Unlock it with a little bit of, look at this, this little paper effect, isn't that a nice thing? Anyway, it's got some lovely menu music that just sounds like Gran Turismo. Anyway, here we've got uh, what Sony are dubbing live area, which is just a dashboard, a, a menu screen, whatever you want to call it. Flick through with your fingers, because it's touch screen, it's like the future. You go through, you find things like your little welcome park, which is uh, all your little um, tests and uh, mini games that teach you how to use the touch screen and the camera and the uh, six axis and all those silly little features. And then you get a little Wi-Fi message that you make go away because it shouldn't have come up. Close that down. Have a look through, you've got your chat party so you can actually have um, a few friends together talking and you actually can use the microphone to chat to each other. We've tried it and it made us laugh, but mainly because we were sat right next to each other when we were doing it, so it kind of defeated the purpose. Uh, the PS Store, which isn't actually working for us at the time of recording because Sony hasn't opened it yet. Uh, Nia, which is uh, something that won't work right now because I don't have an internet connection down here, but it is essentially Sony's version of, uh, I suppose, Street Pass, which you get on Nintendo's 3DS. Um, as it says here, use near to find out what people around you are playing. It searches for other Vita users in the local area, uh, shows you roughly where they are, not exactly so you can't hunt them down and find them, um, but it tells you what they're playing, when they've been playing it, what trophies they've got, things like that. And uh, in using that, you can unlock little bonuses, little extras, little bits and bobs here and there. It's a nice touch. We'll see how well it works. It seems all right. It seems pretty cool. Friends, group messaging, trophies, yes, trophies, uh, photos, so you can uh, go through these little bad boys. The cameras, there are two of them, front and back. The back one is, well, both of them, not that great. It's not something you're going to be using as an actual, um, as an actual camera. The, the quality just isn't high enough. I mean, it doesn't do much to make our sub-editor Dan look very good, but then, I mean, what could? Ooh. Just quit out of that. So, yeah, I mean, the camera's there. It's used as, um, uh, it's used in a few games and things like that. I had to use it in Uncharted for a certain little, uh, I suppose, artificial reality challenge, would they call it that? I don't know anymore. I'm, uh, I'm out of touch. The browser, which is pretty much the same browser as on the PS3 in that it's not great. But, you know, it does a job. You get the internet in your hands. Flip down, music, videos. They're just music and videos, aren't they? Uh, remote play, which is how you control your PS3 using your Vita. Again, it's something I've tried and it worked well, but Sony hasn't yet uh, put the full functionality and you can't yet control PS3 games. You can't yet stream video footage, things like that. You can only do what you could do on remote play on the PSP which was play PS1 games and maybe Pixel Junk Monsters, not much else. But that should be good when it sorts itself out. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, settings, you can mess about with all that. A few games, obviously, got everybody's golf. The greatest golf game ever made. You start it up, it's not instant, but it's quicker and quieter than uh, UMDs ever were. And UMD, oh god, UMD, remember UMDs, <laughs> the past. There are no moving parts in this, I mean, I'm not sure if I've got the right angle here or whatever, but um, pop open the top there, get a little round of applause for that. That's the PS Vita slot, where you put the cards in. There's an extra slot there for god knows what. Um, and you can play games either from the PS Vita game cards, or on the memory cards down here, the Everybody tiny ones. Knows. And that's everybody's golf being loud. Turn you down a little bit. But, um, yeah, I mean, generally speaking, from our time with the Vita, at the time of speaking, recording, whatever, uh, I've probably had a week and a half with it. Took it home over the weekend, playing games with it for hours on end, and didn't get any of the uh, P3 
PSP claw that you get with well with PSP. That's probably what it's called PSP claw. Um, it's comfortable to hold. It's surprisingly light considering the size. I mean, there's nothing really to compare it against here. For, for all you know, I could have tiny hands, and it could be just a normal size thing. But it is quite big. Um, the touch screen's responsive. Um, the back touch pad is uh, also responsive, which is good because otherwise it would be useless. There's tilt and six axis functionality. There's, oh look, two analog sticks. They both work very nicely indeed. And on things like Uncharted, it's a godsend because it means you can actually control it properly. Um, you've got your general buttons and things. And generally speaking, I think I can speak for the whole team when I say we're very impressed. Now, if it actually, if it's going to actually do well, that's another question altogether. Um, it could fail spectacularly, um, but it should do well purely from the perspective that it is a solid, it's an impressive, genuinely impressive piece of kit. And for 250 quid or whatever you're paying for it, you're getting a lot for that money. Um, and the games seem really good too. But we'll cover the games in other videos on this DVD. Uh, thanks for listening and listen to me say um a lot because I'm doing this unscripted. Bye.